Welcome back to Open Line. We have with us Tequila Johnson, co-founder of Equity Alliance. We are talking about voter turnout, voter turnout in Tennessee, voter turnout in Davidson County here the night before the election for our new mayor. Um, and it's not good. Voter turnout's not good. It needs to be better. And why are we in the situation we're in? As we were talking at the top of the show, a lot of it has to do, some of it, has to do with young people. Young people are not voting in the numbers they should be. But there are other reasons as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's go to the phones here. Let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann? Yes. Go uh, right ahead. When I was in school, you had civics and government, and as a group, the seniors would register to vote. It was done across the system. Every school did it. I've retired from Metro, and the last 15 were spent in high school, and it's not done that way anymore, and I think that has had a tremendous effect on our millennials, because that emphasis has been lost, and they come out as young adults without that, that rush, that first real push to be a voter mm -hmm. and when I was in school that was an honor and everybody felt that way and it was it was one of those rites of passage and they don't come out with that feeling anymore and it's it's sad so I think that's one of the reasons why we have the apathy with our our young, and it does affect our election. And right. that's just how I feel about it. And thank you. What do you think about that? So she's saying seniors registered to vote right when they came out of high school, and she feels like there was this sense of pride and an honor um, and maybe duty about voting that isn't there now as much. But what, what, what do you think about what she said there? Um, I agree with her. Uh, when I graduated high school, I wasn't registered to vote. I registered to vote in college as a freshman. So. I, and I took American government my senior year, and you know we took a civics course, but the civics course was more of a history, a U.S. history. It talked about the presidents, and it talked about, you know, it gave us like a, a high-level overview of the three branches of government and what those roles were. But what it did not do is give us a sense of self-determination where you could look at these different roles and see how you could decide how and who impacted your life. So it was not a practice practical course, it was more so a, a, a learning course, so just to kind of tell you what these things did. So I agree with Ann. I think, I think there are several efforts out there now to really try and get our high school students engaged and our, our students at a collegiate level engaged. Um, but again, I think that we need more. We need more resources going to, towards those efforts, and we need more people volunteering and being involved with those efforts. So I said we were going to talk about disenfranchisement, and I want to talk about that. What are you seeing? So we've talked about young people aren't voting as much, mm -hmm. um, but at least what we're talking about, they're registered, they're on the voter rolls. Mm -hmm. What about people that aren't even getting on the rolls, and kind of what, what are some other things you're very concerned about at this point? Um, so yes, of course, felony voter disenfranchisement is a huge thing here in the state. There are almost 400,000 individuals who could have their rights restored and become a voter, be integrated back into society, um, and they're not eligible to vote simply not because they're still incarcerated or not because they, you know, committed some heinous crime, but for fines and fees and these simple things that we should restore to people um, and not use that to, to withhold them from participating in the voting process. You know, we're almost treating voting like a privilege instead of a right. And, and I believe that once you've completed your time and you're off of pro parole and probation and you're trying to be integrated back into society and become a responsible member of society, your civic responsibility should be held to the same standard and you should be allowed to participate in that process. But like, like we said, you see a ton of people who just aren't able to participate and that also plays a role into our turnout numbers. Um, but even aside from that, there's still about 40,000 or so people in Middle Tennessee that are eligible to vote that aren't registered. And, and why is that? Simply because there's no one out there engaging them. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. You know, and, and we have to, 
I believe that it is people's civic responsibility to vote, but I also believe that once you've been educated on something, and once you know something to a certain extent, it's also your responsibility to share that knowledge and to empower other people. Something like voter ID, is that um, an impediment? And why is that an impediment? Talk about voter ID. Oh, voter ID. Voter ID. <laughs> Where do I start? Voter ID is definitely an impediment. It definitely keeps a lot of people from the polls, in particular our college students. There was a time where you could go and vote with your college ID. Now, you can't. You have to have a Davis, uh, either a passport how many college students have a passport? I didn't get a passport until I was well out of college. Or you have to have a Davidson County ID. The only way you can get a Davidson County ID is if you have a physical address. When I stayed on campus, I stayed on campus, I worked, I paid taxes, I did everything that any Davidson County resident would do, but I had a P.O. box. So I could not have gone and gotten a Davidson County ID. And so you have tons, I mean, we have what, five, six major universities in Davidson County. There are tons of students at, in those universities that are engaged and they want to participate but can't because of voter ID laws. There are people who don't have a driver's license. Their license have been suspended for whatever reason, court fines, fees, child support, we know all of those are big issues, and they can't get it. I mean, imagine if you've been told to turn over your driver's license for whatever reason. The odds of you wanting to go, wait in line and get an ID, go and vote, are very slim. So there are a lot of, of things that we probably don't think um, are keeping people away from voting, but they really are. Because, yeah, the argument is, oh, it's no big deal to show them your driver's license. But you're saying there's a whole group that it's they don't have a driver's oh, yeah. license. And, you know, I will be honest. I thought that way. When I first went into this work, there were several things that I thought would be easy. Like, oh, well, we could just take people down and tell them to get a driver's license and everybody will be ready to go vote. But it doesn't work like that. And until you're actually engaged with those populations of people who have those cert sort of uh, disparities and aren't able to have access to certain things, you don't realize just how privileged it is when you say things like that if you've never experienced it. So it, it may sound simple, but it's really not that simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, that's a couple. Let's go to Lucy now. Lucy on uh, line two. Hello, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey. Well, I've got like three kind of things here, and I would like to say first that the local elections, like the city and the state elections, will affect your life, and you just laid it all out because those things that you just mentioned are controlled by the state legislature, mm -hmm. and it shows that what is happening is by design and it's intentional. It's like, you know, you have to sit here and beg the question, why do they hate poor people or something so much? You know, it just makes you wonder. It just blows your mind when you think about the trouble that they go to in the length to, to suppress voters. But uh, another thing as far as local elections are these councilmen at large. People don't realize those are the people that aren't in your district, but they're out law at large, and they're like free radical cancer cells. They can ruin your life, and you don't even know what's coming in these city council meetings. And those, to me, are the most uh, dangerous positions to get in the wrong hands. But, uh, you know, I've got an opinion about the state election, why there's a uh, you know, the high registration but the low turnout, it's because a lot of wealthy people have come here to Tennessee and they use this as a tax haven. They register the vote, uh, they keep up their voter registration and their residence because they mainly live in another state where there's a state income tax and all this other stuff. That's just my opinion. I've seen that grow in my opinion. But here's the last thing. Y'all went back to the uh, presidential elections. I'm going to go back to the 2016 uh, primaries and something I saw on TV that made me very angry for my fellow Tennesseans. It, 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 I, I felt so insulted for myself and them. And I don't care what your your party is. If you get out and vote or, or there is an election that occurs, you should be respected in your state when a candidate comes here. Mr. Trump. In the Republican primary, I would like to know what the age groups were that voted in that primary here in Tennessee for the Republican uh, primary. Because when he won the Republican primary here in Tennessee, 
He was on camera. There were several other states that night also doing votes. But he acted like he was so shocked. And But he looked like he could break out laughing because he said when we came to Tennessee that he loved the uh, uneducated. And he repeated it, I think, two more times. Oh, I love the uneducated. And I <laughs> thought, that. that's terrible. He so we, that? know, we know what's followed. But what I want to know, <laughs> who voted for him and who was he insulted? Was he insulting them because they voted for him, or was he insulted the ones that did not uh, 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 vote? You know what I'm trying to say here? Right. I I'll hang up and take your comment, if you know, Miss Johnson, what that demographic was in that uh, Republican primary. Thank you for listening. Lucy, thank you as always. Thank you, Lucy. What do you think? Do you know that was about... A, that was a, uh, I'm interested in a couple of things Lucy question. said, but do you know the makeup of the vote in the GOP Republican primary? I do not. I do not know the numbers as mm -hmm. in-depth as I know these numbers, no. You guys going back a little bit. Yes. An interesting theory Lucy had, there are people that say they live in Tennessee, they maintain a residence here because we have no income tax, they even register to vote here, but then they don't really live here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we have a low voter turnout. Have you heard that theory? What do you think of that? I have not heard that theory. I mean, but it wouldn't be so far-fetched. I don't think, however, that those people are enough to impact voter turnout. Just because when you look at the statistical data, most of the people that don't turn out are what they refer to as the new American majority, and that is our minorities, single moms, people between the ages of 18 and 35, African Americans, um, those typical disenfranchised communities. Um, so I wouldn't say that that is the makeup of it. Now, I don't doubt that people aren't doing that because there are some people that I'm sure figure out ways to get around <laughs> paying taxes. But I don't think that that is the reason why our voter turnout is as dismal as it is. Okay. All right. Lucy, thank you. Um, it would be interesting to know that about the Republican primary. Yeah. I kind of remember when Donald Trump said that. I feel like he was mocking um, the media that, mm -hmm. that said his voters were maybe uneducated. And, yeah. and half of what he says, he's mocking the media. And mo I feel like he was mocking. But that's, that's interesting that you would remember that. And yeah, I can't keep up with everything Donald Trump says. Yeah. Or yeah. tweets, for that matter. Let's go, to, um, let's go to Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Yeah. Go right ahead. What's on your mind? Uh, I, I was just I was talking about some things that were missing a little bit early in the broadcast. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm in going into my sixties. Okay. All right. Turn down your TV. You have to turn down your okay. TV. Um, okay. And then you can and then you can talk to us. <laughs> Uh, uh, give them an uh, idea a uh, way to where people can be able to vote uh, from like the schools, like the schools, they can have like an uh, educational section to where the students can get a little bit more involved in knowing what and why they need to vote and then make it even better that they can also set up a section at the schools to where they can literally vote from their schools. Also, it's another thing I noticed. People have to work, and the ones that are working, they, uh, uh, when they get off from work, and they, they got to go through traffic and all sorts of things, is there a way where we can switch this, this, this break of a new style of voting where people can vote from their jobs? And hmm. I have to literally leave their jobs and hustle somewhere where they got to stand in a line and so forth and so forth and then try to get home and then make it back to work the next morning. Uh, and then like I was going to say about me, I'm, I'm, I'm an elder person. Where I got to vote is not that far from me, but I'm isolated primarily where I live. I don't have transportation. So, uh, and then my income comes on a certain day. And like right this year, every year, if I, if I said, well, if, if, if the last day with the vote was on the day I get my, my check, I could pay someone to take me to vote. But right. like once again, here it is, tomorrow is going to be the last day to vote. But I don't get my, my uh, annuity until that day after. And it seems never to hit on time. 
And I was wondering if there's another, if it's possible where we can turn this old government style of voting, especially for our, our mayor. Now, the presidency, that's different. But for us, our local voting, like our mayors and district attorneys and things like that, look like they could be done in a simplified, quick, and easy, and out of that, not only do this, but have it analyzed. Bring back quality control in this country is what I say. Have it uh, analyzed to where it would be secure and they can, there's no room for uh, distortion of any right, type. Right. Uh, you don't understand. That's pretty much my question. Yeah, voter fraud is always a, a concern. Um, interesting. You're you're up there in the legislature. You've, you you kind of know. what Other states do some things. What are some things we could be doing in Tennessee? Vote by mail, automatic voter registration. There are tons of things that have been proven to increase voter turnout. But Eddie, I can tell you right now, unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen in the state of Tennessee anytime soon. We would like to hope that our legislature will see that there is a need to make voting more, to accommodate people more when it comes to voting, but the odds of them doing that are very slim, and I'm just being very realistic. Why do you think that is? Because simply because they don't want to lose power. Mm -hmm. and, and they feel like that would, if, if they pass something like that, they would lose power. Oh, they know it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. You feel like if that were passed, would more people would vote for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More people would vote. I mean, if you make it in the state of Tennessee, if you look at the, the last decade of laws that have been passed or policies that have been put in place around voter registration and actually going out and voting, you will see that we have not followed other states and made it easier to vote. We've actually made it harder. We've gotten stricter with our voter ID laws. We've limited access uh, to, to polling days. We used to be able to vote on Sundays. They took Sunday out. They've made the time window smaller. There aren't as many locations. Um, now they're even saying voter registration can't be done on a massive level so they are really limiting how and the access to actually participate in the civic process mm -hmm. okay all right we have to take a break uh, we'll continue the discussion take a break if you want to call in there's a the number 615-737 plus 615-737-7587 take a break be back right after this